Hi there YouTube, Big G back again with another video and this time a little repair video. I'm going to try to <laughs> repair this old Atari 130XE. Great old machines, love the look of them. Got that lovely Atari ST look to them. It was the 128K version of the uh, old Atari 8-bits. I think this was the last one that came out. I think very underrated. Uh, it should have done better than what it did. It had a huge software library. But um, obviously it came out at the end of the 8-bit reign. And everybody was moving to 16 bits. So it, did, it was sort of dead when it came out. Um, but anyway, I'd like to get this one fixed. Got a couple of issues. One is with the power. Um, sometimes the power switch, you know, when I've got power to it, sometimes it'll switch on, sometimes it won't. And when it switches on, then it goes straight into its test mode. And in the test mode, I can see there that there are issues with the uh, memory chips. So let's, first of all, let's just see if it will switch on and I can show you. So, you know, if I have a look here at the screen, uh, one thing with the Atari is they had this lovely built-in uh, test. And you can see there it's running through its memory test. And you can see the green and red blocks there for the RAM. So definitely showing RAM issues. Well, I take it to be RAM issues because it's like a green block and then a red block. And it's so it goes through. So definitely some issues there. Uh, let's just let it get through to the second line. Normally it would run through here and then it would get through... It, it doesn't get past the RAM test um, and then otherwise normally it would go through the RAM test and then a the sound test and so forth so it gets this far let me just show you you can see there now it's sort of red block after red block after red block so definitely some some RAM issues so two things with this machine that I can see uh, one power supply um, you know the actual power pins I need to check that and I need to check these memory chips well, let me get it open. Okay, so I resoldered the connections, or should I say the for the actual switch over here. I just gave them another little resoldering and I had a look around to see if there was anything else that looked a little bit suspect. Couldn't find anything else. So now I get out my spare memory chips. Now these are 426420s that are on this motherboard but from what I know the 4164s are compatible with the 4264s well I hope they're compatible so I'm going to start piggybacking these chips on top of these so I can identify which one is actually at fault I'm ready to start testing the memory chips so first off I've just let it run and that's just to get a base you can see there I've written down on a piece of paper um, that combination green red green red green red etc etc all the way through um, I think it's only testing half of its memory but that's fine and then I'll start swapping in memory chips and see how it improves or hopefully it doesn't get worse but it should improve as I swap uh, or piggyback memory chips so let's see how that goes Okay, so I piggybacked the first chip in the top there. It made no difference to the actual pattern on the memory test. So I moved that chip and I've piggybacked the second one. And straight away I can see there on the screen uh, some of the red blocks have disappeared. So it has made an improvement. So now I know that that second chip definitely has an issue. So I'll leave that one piggyback there and uh, move on to the next. Well, with chip number two and three piggybacked so far that's the best I've managed to get it it's cleaned up like half of the red dots so far so let me keep trying the next one and the next one if I tried the third um, I see piggyback it actually went backwards so that's quite strange <laughs> so let me keep trying okay so I haven't managed to fix the computer um, but by piggybacking these three memory chips here you can see the three there I managed to get the best result so if I have a look up at the screen I have got the best possible result as to the self memory test so it's showing the most green blocks as such but obviously there is still something that is causing an issue here now if you have a look at the memory chips that are on the actual board, they are MT4264-20s. Now the memory chips that I'm using 
are, I'll just bring you, or you can actually see it over there, are 4164B 15s. So maybe that's the issue. Um, maybe I'm using the wrong chips. I don't quite know. Maybe I need to get some, something, you know, some other memory chips to check. But definitely there is memory issues on this board. Uh, I've given it my best shot. I've tried. This is all I have actually in inventory at the moment. So I don't have anything else that I can actually try to actually fix this old 130XE. Um, I'd love to have one of those diagnostic cartridges that could then have a look to see whether there's maybe something else that's wrong. We'll actually identify which memory chip is giving an issue. Well, so far I can see it's these three over here because uh, if I remove the chips that are piggybacking on them, then I get a hell of a lot more red blocks in the self-memory test. The other thing is uh, doing a bit of reading on Google and in some of the Atari uh, ages forums and so forth, the self-memory test is actually not a very not a very good or comprehensive test as such. So even the test may be faulty and maybe it's not giving me the right information as well. So that could be an issue as well. But anyway, it was fun trying to fix this old lady and try to get her up and running. Any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. Um, and maybe I'll give this a go at another stage if I manage to get some other chips to try and uh, replace and get this old 130XE up and running again. Okay guys, cheers from me and remember, keep it retro.